Hey there, my name is John Lee and welcome back to my channel. When it comes to investing, one of the most Googled questions yielding over 475,000 thousand search results is how many stocks should you own in your portfolio? Someone in your local town or city own three to five different businesses, say a cake shop, maybe a dry cleaner or a grocery store, you probably say that that's a pretty well diversified business person. Yet when it comes to investing in the stock market, experts suggest that holding upwards of 20 to 30 different holdings is important. Now in today's video, I'll share with you guys a clip where Buffett shares his insights on diversification. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this topic, so leave a comment down below on how many stocks you think you should hold in your portfolio. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and I hope you enjoyed this quick clip. My name is Mark Hake. I'm from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and I am very interested in your policies on diversification and also how you concentrate your investments, and I've studied your annual reports going back a good number of years, and there's been years where you had a lot of stocks in your marketable, equitable securities portfolio, and there was one year where you only had three in 1987. Um, so I have two questions. Um, given the number of stocks that you have in the portfolio now, what does that imply about your view of the market in terms of is it fairly valued, that kind of uh, idea. And second of all, uh, whenever you, it seems that whenever you take a new investment, you never take less than about 5% and never more than about 10% of the total portfolio with that new position. And I wanted to see if I'm correct about that. Yeah, well, on the second point, that, there, that really isn't correct. We, uh, we have positions which you don't even see because we only listed the ones above 600 million in the last report, and obviously those are all smaller positions. Sometimes be that's because they're smaller companies and we couldn't get that much money in. Sometimes it's because the price has moved up after we've bought them. And sometimes it's because we're, we may be selling the position down even. But uh, so we have no, there's nothing magic. We like to put a lot of money in things that, uh, that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, you know, we, we think diversification is as practice generally makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, they, diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably uh, because there aren't that many wonderful businesses at, that are understandable to a single human being in all likelihood and, it, and to have some super wonderful business and then put money in number 30 or 35 on your list of attractiveness and, and forego putting more money into number one just strikes Charlie and me as, as, as madness. And it, it, it's conventional practice and it, it, it may, uh, you know, if all you have to achieve is, is average, uh, it it's, uh, it, it's, uh, may preserve your job, but it, it's a confession in our view that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. Um, you know, I base, I mean, as on a personal portfolio basis, you know, I own one stock, you know, it, but it's a business I know, it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. Uh, so. You know, do I, do I need to own 28 stocks in order to you know, have proper diversification, you know, and, uh, be nonsense. And within Berkshire, I could pick out three of our businesses and I would, I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned and I had all my money in Berkshire. Now, I love it, the fact that we can find more than that and that we keep adding to it. But three wonderful businesses is, is, is more than... Uh, more than you need in this life to do very well and uh, uh, the average the average person isn't going to run into that I mean if you look at how the fortunes were built in this country uh, they weren't built out of a portfolio of 50 companies they were they were built by someone who who uh, identified with us with a wonderful business coca-cola is a great example a lot of fortunes have been built on that and there aren't 50 coca-colas you know, there aren't 20 if there were it'd be fine we could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and, and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it. And, uh, and the truth is you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you have a really wonderful business is very well protected against, against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and, and, and the competition. I mean, 
you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition. And three of those will be better than 100 average businesses. At, uh, uh, and, and they'll be safer, incidentally. I mean, uh, they, there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there, than there is in owning 50 uh, well-known big businesses. And uh, uh, it's amazing what has been taught over the years in finance classes about that, but uh, uh, I can assure you that that uh, I would rather pick, if, if I had to bet the next 30 years on the fortunes of, uh, of my family that would be dependent upon the income from a given group of businesses, I would rather pick three businesses from those we own than own a diversified group of 50. But Charlie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what he's saying is that much of what is taught in modern corporate finance courses is twaddle. Do you want to elaborate on that, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot believe this stuff. I mean, <laughs> it, it's uh, modern portfolio theory and it's, it's. It has no utility. But I mean, it, it, it. You know, it will tell you how to do average, but you know, I, I, I think uh, anybody can figure out how to do average in fifth grade. I mean, it, it's just not that difficult. And uh, it's, it's elaborate, and you know, there's lots of little Greek letters and all kinds of things to make you feel that you're in the big leagues. But it, uh, <laughs> there is no value added. <laughs> I have great difficulty with it because I am something of a student of dementia. And I have. <laughs> yeah, we hang around a lot together. And I can ordinarily <laughs> classify dementia, you know, on some uh, theory structure of models. But the modern portfolio theory, uh, it involves a type of dementia I just can't even classify. No. Something very strange is going on. <laughs> yeah. If you find if you find three wonderful businesses in your life, you'll get very rich. And and if you understand them. Bad things aren't going to happen to that, those three. I mean, that, that's the characteristic of it. it uh, By the way, maybe that's the reason there's so much dementia. If you believe what Warren said, you could teach the whole course in about a week. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, and the high priest wouldn't have any edge over the lay people, and that, that right. never sells well. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this video and sticking till the very end. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will be notified when I drop my next video on this channel. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.